Hey, hey, what up, y'all? Justin Gay, Seeds of Zanzadu. I feel like that might be better. I am out here today spraying for insects, namely the larva of moths, cutworms in particular. They love to hit our lettuce crop. What I'm doing right now is going through and trying to pick out the uh, lettuce that might be under the most attack. Right now, the larvae are very small. Now, cutworms will grow up to damn near about an inch or two. They annihilate, and I mean annihilate my garden, uh, especially when it comes to the lettuce crops and the uh, pretty much the leafy green crops, right? So I am now spraying, I'm doing it 100% organic with Dr. Earth Urban. The aphids and the caterpillars are what I'm after right now. So Dr. Earth's very easy to get name I trust so I'm gonna go ahead and try to nail it with him that stuff smells I mean it has like a lot of uh, garlic in it now let's go so even though there's a lot of good stuff going on back here there's a lot of stuff that's not good so there's a lot of stuff sweet out here there's a lot of stuff like that that's happening here on this garden there's parts missing from the leaf, right? There's two types of really pests that you're gonna find in the uh, garden. There's one with maniples or jaws. They're gonna be taking bites. So those ones are gonna be leaving holes. So most of your larva like caterpillars, grasshoppers, stuff like that, right? They're gonna be pincher bugs, right? They're gonna be, um, they're gonna be biting, taking bites out. That's how you know that more than likely uh, you got caterpillars or something like I just said. The other type of uh, pests that you're gonna find inside your garden are ones that suck. Things like aphids, regrata bugs, stuff like that. Right now what I'm dealing with is a lot of caterpillars. To try to safeguard against, uh, against these pests, the first one was I've allowed most of my lettuce greens to grow out a little bit bigger. Uh, that was pretty cool. It would have worked better, but I was actually growing inside of the landscape fabric. I burned up a lot of the outer leaves because of that, because they laid on the landscape fabric, the landscape fabric was hot, and then they just melted. I was able to bring a lot of them back, but nevertheless, that's just extra time. But anyway, I grew them out a little bit bigger because I wanted to have them more established so they could survive some type of attack uh, against the pest because last year we just got knocked out. This year, doing more insect netting, getting really more, more diligent about insect netting. Um, I don't know if that really works or not. I see moths inside of the net, insect netting sometime. Um, to be honest with you, having a caterpillar tunnel at this point is something that I'm really starting to think about, uh, especially in the back. That way I can actually have an ecosystem, a closed in ecosystem where I can really penetrate and annihilate anything that gets inside of my system with other beneficial bacteria or beneficial insects. Being said, another thing that I'm gonna be using this year is more nematodes. I feel as though those are gonna be fairly safe to use seeing that I'm putting them in the soil. There should be enough food in the soil for them to survive. And then especially when the uh, larva of the caterpillar, I mean of the uh, butterfly is then dropped into the soil, it could take out the eggs, it could take out the larva. If I do decide to maybe larger uh, tunnels, than what I have now. I will go ahead and get parasitic wasp. That way, if I'm covering about two to three rows, I can actually put a couple parasitic wasp uh, little tabs inside of that enclosure, have them be able to really help out there as well. Things like parasitic wasps and, wasp and ladybugs and stuff like that that can get away, I normally steer away from or I'll just allow them to come to me. I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying. I think it's dead or dying. I'm gonna consider that a good sign. Hopefully this stuff is working. So that actually worked out pretty cool. It's pretty quick. Wide span. That bottle's about 20 bucks, dog. Hopefully it does what it needs to do. It's seven o'clock right now. This is the time of the day where I wanna be doing this type of stuff, especially when it comes to spraying some type of pesticide. That kind of stuff, you don't wanna be messing around and letting it uh, sit on top of your leaves all day long. You can do it in the morning. In fact, sometimes I might have to do it early in the morning uh, just to give it enough time to actually evaporate before the sun does hit. I, because of that reason, normally like to do it at night just so it sits on the leaves and it has even longer to evaporate before it actually gets into the sun and actually gets cooked on. That goes for every type of spray. I don't care if it's compost tea or, or pesticide, I don't care. I really want to do that going in towards the evening. But if I do have to do it in the morning, I definitely will do it in the morning. Nevertheless, I know it's a must do for me. Um, 
my plot is just too small to be messing around with the things that cut, cut worms. Yes, I do go outside at night and I do pick them off manually. Yeah, I did that all last year. I tried BT, I've tried um, just insect netting and BT. Neither of those things really worked for me. So I've got to go to the next level which is spraying hopefully something that's just gonna work. And like I said, we are gonna go with uh, nematodes as well. So we will have that biology at work as well. Um, until my crop here, until actually my soil here gets strong enough to actually start fending off those things for me. Um, hopefully that'll be happening pretty soon as we keep on adding different compost teas and stuff like that into the soil. Now I know there's a wee bit of a debate about compost tea and if it actually does work or help out for you. Um, and I think it all kind of comes down to context. Compost tea may not necessarily improve an already great soil or if you're already getting soils in. Um, it really, like I said, depends on your context. If you're getting those good soils, yeah, like this compost team, you may not need it. If you do not have great soil, like me at this point, I have good soil, but I don't have great soil. Compost tea to me is a very fast injection method to get into your to get into your compost to get those bacteria and stuff working. And then maybe there might come a day where I don't have to spray compost tea anymore. Hope you guys found this video useful, y'all. Yeah. Peace. Yo, if you guys are dealing with any kind of pests, I'd love to hear about them. Big up. This stuff smells like garlic. This stuff smells like shrimp. Shit's making me want to have shrimp scampi. No joke, dude. I want shrimp scampi. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying.